Good evening, councillors. Reverend Canon Edwards cannot be with us this Ash Wednesday evening and has asked me to send his blessings and best wishes for the meeting. Please be seated. Okay, I've rescued it. It's the Barra Crest, of course. Apologies for absence. I've been received from Councillors Dawson, Rigby and Sweet, an apology for lateness from Councillor Grimston and also from Councillor Salier. Are there any other apologies? Councillor Cooper uh, Leone. Yes, Councillor Akinola has sent apologies. All right, Councillor Akinola. Okay. Where's Councillor Gilbert? What? I said it's not good. <coughs> the minutes of the meetings held on the 5th of December 2018 and also on the 6th of February 2019 have been circulated. Can I sign these minutes as a correct record? <laughs> Item 2 is Mayor's announcement. Before we continue, I'm sure that I speak on behalf of all members here this evening that our thoughts and prayers are with the family and friends of local resident Mr. Ian Tomlin, whose wake took place at the Civic Suite last Friday. Mr. Tomlin uh, is thanked for the services he undertook on behalf of Wandsworth Council. I would like to advise members that the Young Chef Celebration Dinner, which was to have been a mayoral fundraiser, will not be taking place at the Civic Suite. Instead, there will be Young chef celebration lunch at the South Thames College in Malden. Councillors will be invited along with head teachers and others directly involved in this important event. It won't be a fundraiser. On tonight's agenda, can members please note that items 16, 17, 18, 20 and 21 are required to be considered as a matter of urgency. The reasons are set out in full at the top of those items. I'd like to advise members that in relation to paragraph two of report number one, council tax requirement and council tax for 2019-20, the report should be corrected to read, quote, recommendations A to D were supported by six votes to five and recommendation E was supported unanimously, unquote. Can the council also please note that government regulations require councils to formally record members' names in any vote or proposed amendment on setting the council tax? I therefore intend to take these votes in the same way as a division when the council deals with this matter in paragraph two of report number one this evening. I'd like to remind members when speaking, the red light comes on 30 seconds before the end of their speech. On item three, are there any members who have any declarations of interest in any of the matters to be considered at this meeting? Councillor Leonie Cooper. Uh, well, it would appear that I need to remind people that I am the Assembly Member for Merton and Wandsworth because there's a question uh, that talks about something that uh, nobody uh, from the majority party bothered to run past me. Um, question seven, Mr. Mayor, um, and anything else on the agenda that relates to the GLA? Any other declarations of interest? Councillor uh, Govindia. Mr. Mayor, I just wanted to declare in respect of the pension for Colin Tracy for his son, he does have some money in the bank account. Thank you. Any more? Item four relates to sealing of documents. Is this item received as information? 
Item five, are there any petitions? Councillor Morgan. Right. Councillor Morgan. Uh, we've collected 750 signatures in support of the Diamond Jubilee footbridge and we'll be submitting more signatures in the future as well. Councillor Dickerdom. Uh, I've got uh, 53 signatures from residents on Emu Street um, to try and regulate the use of oversized vehicles passing through Emu and Broughton. I didn't hear a word of that, but I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> Councillor uh, Gibbons. Um, I have a written petition by 84 residents asking to uh, asking Wandsworth Council to reconsider the recent vote to discontinue stay and play at Franciscan Children's Centre as it is an essential service to the children and parents who access it. There are a further 317 signatures online, which I understand Councillor Ambash and Councillor McDermott have forwarded to uh, uh, Mr. Sass, and those can be added. Thank you. Councillor Birchall. Um, I have a petition for the residents of um, Burntwood Lane um, asking the council to look at the speed of traffic and the safety of traffic on Burntwood Lane. Councillor Angela Graham. I want to um, present a petition um, requesting the council to review the speed on Burtwood Lane. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Ellis. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I, I have a petition from residents of Ramsden Road uh, calling for traffic calming measures. Thank you. That's fine. Uh, yes. Councillor Locker. Uh, thank you. I move that the council adjourn for 30 seconds. Mr. Mayor, Clyde House in Putney is managed by A2 Dominion, who have badly let down residents. The recently built block of flats has been plagued with problems since completion, including faulty lifts, leaking pipes, and a broken heating system. A2 Dominion has failed to tackle these issues and let them fester. They have ignored the complaints and warnings from residents which has led to problems worsening, risking people's safety. Disabled people and wheelchair users have been left trapped. Residents have had to be temporarily housed in hotel accommodation. Lives have been disrupted and made a misery. Residents, councillors, officers, and the local MP have all met with A2 Dominion to tell them to get their act together. Their poor performance has even been highlighted in Parliament by Justine Greening. Yet work remains slow and residents are rightfully angry. I ask us all to send a message to A2 Dominion tonight that the problems have to be fixed once and for all, that residents should be compensated for their suffering and to show support for the residents of Clyde House. So, Mr Mayor, I move that the council adjourns. Oh yeah. Have we got a seconder for that? Councillor Angela Graham and Councillor Torrington. Uh, Councillor Kavindia, do you want to respond? Um, yes, Mr Mayor. Um, I thank Councillor Locker for raising this issue of uh, Clyde House, which uh, I think when it was graphically illustrated in both social media and in uh, other paper coverage, uh, showed a shocking lack of care by A2 Dominion towards the uh, tenants. Uh, members will know that A2 Dominion is a social landlord. It is not uh, a for-profit landlord. In fact, it is one that uh, by its statutes and charters required to provide homes for people in housing need. And one would have hoped that uh, such a responsible organization would have behaved responsibly towards its uh, tenants uh, and others. I know that the matter was first brought to the council's attention as a result of the MP's intervention and earlier when I was talking to uh, officers who gave me a bit of an update on what has happened since the matter was raised, so I can say to Councillor Locker that as far as this council is concerned, uh, the council has been very clear to A2 Dominion as to what it wants and expects A2 Dominion to provide. 
One thing I'd like to show members about is that there was some talk about gas safety, uh, uh, but the reality is the building doesn't have gas for heating because the building is heated through uh, a combined heat power plant uh, which, is shared, which is shared across the whole of the development. Normally, Mr. Mayor, in situations like this, I would invite uh, uh, the councillor to withdraw uh, his, his uh, desire to adjourn the council. But I do think that the issue is serious and significant, and our position has to be very clear and open that we expect a social landlord to behave socially responsibly and that we expect them to take all measures very quickly, as quickly as possible, to allay the fears of residents and address all the, all the defects in that block. So I'd be happy to accept the 32nd uh, adjournment and uh, a very clear and ringing message go from this town hall that uh, as far as A2 Dominion is a relationship with the extendants is concerned, we expect nothing but the best. Councillor Locke, are you, you, you happy? Okay, the motion now before the Council is that the Council do now adjourn for 30 seconds to draw attention to what we've just, the issue we've just um, heard about. Um, all those in favour? Anybody against? Any abstentions? All right. Happily, that's um, carried unanimously. I'm not sure Dominion would be quite so happy about it, but uh, we need some action. The um, council will now adjourn for 30 seconds. Anybody who's got their mics on, please turn them off. Right, the council is now back in session. And I actually forgot to say thank you. Each of the petitions will be referred to the executive or the appropriate committee or subcommittee. Uh, it's now time, item six, for leaders' questions. Councillor Hogg. Question number one to the leader. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I thank Councillor Hogg for his question. Um, what is important in this debate is to recognize two things, Mr. Mayor. One is that the role this council has and the limitations of that role. Our role is to help and support those who have made ones of that home, their home. And that we have done in, in good measure by our relationship with uh, Citizens Advice Wandsworth. And I know in the report uh, talks about, the answer talks about over 2,000 people have benefited from that uh, relationship that we got with uh, Citizens Advice. And I know that Citizens Advice continues to work s strongly and diligently with the community. The other thing is that limitations on our role is that we don't have a, a role to play in the negotiations of how Britain extracts itself from the e e EU. What we do have is, is the responsibility to watch how this is panning out and to uh, help and advise businesses and others. Councillor Hogg in his uh, uh, question makes uh, obviously a political point about this too. And the truth is that both parties have a very mixed and a tr tr troubled view of Brexit. Of course the Labour Party leader did not particularly energetically campaign to remain in Europe. Uh, his position on Europe has been all sorts of things until very recently under the threat of the collapse of his own party that he changed his mind. 
My own party has also its own divisions and its own difficulties. I don't think either of us are in a position to shape the true thinking of our party uh, along the lines of what we would want uh, as an outcome for Brexit. For me, the important thing is that we concentrate on the job that we can do and deliver the outcome that we can have for the citizens of this borough. Uh, Mr. Hall. Mr. Mayor. Um, well, I mean, I don't know about irresponsible scaremongering as, as he alleges in his question, but I do know that a no-deal Brexit would be a disaster for this country, uh, economically, socially, and our standing in the world. Will the leader, if not the rest of his cabinet, join us in supporting a public vote on the final deal? I think Councillor um, uh, Hogg for his supplementary. It's interesting he says he knows. There are an awful lot of people who don't know what will happen after 29th of March, and I think they are in the overwhelming majority. So if he knows, and he's so confident that he knows, perhaps uh, he would like to help the government out uh, since he seems to be absolutely confident about it. Let me, let me to page, share two things with, with, with members here. Last week, um, the chief executive and I had the chance to meet uh, as, uh, the chief executive of a major developer working in the borough. He assured us both that as far as his workforce was concerned, it remained quite overwhelmingly from the EU nations. But he was also gratified that after the Christmas holidays, they all returned to work and they continue to work and they have no plans of, of leaving after 29th of March or, or subsequently. So he is confident that the work, labor supply for his development will not be affected adversely. He was also able to assure both of us that as far as the material supply chain was concerned, they have taken steps to both stockpile and get contracts in place so that that uh, stockpile remains, that the ch supply chain remains uninterrupted. We also had a meeting with the chairman of the Govan Garden Market Authority, and you would have thought that a market which sells its goods and imports its goods from Holland and wherever, all over from Europe, about a third of the market's produce comes from the EU countries. He said that as far as traders were concerned, they saw this as both a challenge and an opportunity. They were confident that particularly the supply chain from Holland was robust and would be maintained irrespective of what happens on the 29th of March. He in fact also said that as far as the flower market is concerned, there is an opportunity for Britain to actually directly import flowers from overseas rather than go via Holland as they currently do. So like all of these things, we, we collect snippets of what and how businesses in this borough are facing the challenge and it looks like most of them are resilient and confident that everything will be fairly okay after the 29th of March. Second supplementary, Mr. Mayor. The uh, opposition leader talks about social and economic risk to Wandsworth, but surely they would multiply under the far left government led by Jeremy Corbyn. Does the leader agree with me that Jeremy and Momentum's wholesome praise of the Marxist Venezuelan regime and their plans to introduce the same policies here would be disastrous and costly for our borough's residents? Councillor Kabindia. Well, I, I, I thank uh, Councillor Hampton for her supplementary. And as always, Councillor Hampton gets it right, really, because, because the, reason, the reason why the country is rather grateful that the party opposite is led by Jeremy Corbyn is that the country knows precisely what the risk, risks are. And opinion poll after opinion poll says, irrespective of what the government's performance might be like, they know who they do not want. And they do not want that lot over there to be in control of this country's uh, affairs. And of course, she mentions Venezuela. And of course, you know, it is one of those odd things that Mr. Corbyn historically has always been anti-European. 
he has always been fairly against Britain's alliances with America and other Western nations. He has been generally more supportive of people who, who we on this side certainly would regard as enemies of this country, or certainly not well-wishers of this country. And so one has to be grateful that the people see, uh, share exactly that thought and do not put his trust, their trust in him. Councillor Hogg. Question number two to the leader. Um, I thank Councillor Hogg for his uh, question. And Mr. Mayor, Councillor Hogg refers to the affairs of uh, Richmond. So I'd only remind him and others that when we were debating the shared staffing arrangement with Richmond, one of the things that was very clear in my mind and was certainly clear in the mind of Lord True, who was then the leader of Richmond, was that neither council will be able to dictate to the other. In fact, the idea was that we would share each other's understanding but still remain sovereign and independent. And that is precisely what we are and we, what we do. And this is all about sort of using the Richmond scenario, but so then it almost uh, reminds me also that the opposition party was very un welcoming of our relationship with Richmond. They thought we should find somebody else to uh, partner with. Uh, Richmond was wholly inappropriate, uh, but it looks like uh, councillors found a new buddy in, in, in Richmond. Well, let's see where that goes. Supplemental. S supplementary, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Broin. Well, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> sorry, it's a first supplemental. Councillor Hogg, I beg your pardon. Um, thank Councilor you, Mr. Brian, you can get the second one. Um, I, I thank the leader for his answer. I, I find it disappointing he didn't touch on the subject I asked about at all, which I, I thought was a bit off. But um, the London living wage, as he knows, is, is £10.55 an hour. It's set independently um, to cover what Londoners need to live a satisfying life here. It's paid by more than 800 London employers now, and the majority of London councils, including our partners in Richmond, are committed to this great reform. Does the leader not agree that if our partners in